Hi, this is Nancy Hines Glazer with All Art All the Time for Soma TV. And today I'm lucky enough to be with Vivian Olshin at the Livingston Community Center, correct? That's and we're right. in the gallery uh, and we're going to be talking about and seeing some of the artwork of Michael Frank. And Vivian, I want you to tell us a little bit if you could about the place. The place? Yes. Oh, well, I'm Vivian Olshin, president of the Arts Council in Livingston. And um, our organization was founded in 1990, um, and we're an arm of the Livingston Township Council. Um, it, this was formed to actually to coordinate and promote art in the community. Various groups are members of our organization, such as the Livingston Art Association and the Camera Club, and actually the New Jersey Ballet, uh, community players, um, Children's Theater, uh, Riker Hill Art Park, um, the Opera Guild, and so on. It goes on and on. On and on. <laughs> so and that's your job. You're in charge of all uh, Exactly. Okay. So we're still performing in visual arts. Um, we sponsor many events. Um, our main uh, event is Art in the Oval. And we're in, we're in front of one of the wonderful pieces of work that's on exhibit here now. And the show is run by the Arts Council, mainly yes. you. Well, yeah, with many other volunteers. Yeah, actually, right. our chair is Harriet Kaufman, and um, and she uh, couldn't be here with us today. That's unfortunate. That's okay. In any case, we're so excited with Michael's work because Michael Frank does these amazing, um, passionate, exciting pieces. The color, the, um, the action, they're action paintings. And um, you, you just feel his emotion. And, here. and you know from this, because this is your special area, well, you are an oil painter, yes, right? Yes, I am. So yes, you are an artist, not just a great organizational. Well, so you know, actually, you are an artist first. Right up. Right up. And you, you do teach classes also? I do, at the J JCC over at um, in West Orange. Right. So well, we want to thank you for letting us come and through the interview today because we think it's important to honor all our arts and artists. And it shows Essex County working together as well. We're so excited that you invited yeah, us. Well, thank you so much for being on camera. And we hope you get some classes. And if we get anyone who calls in, and uh, ask, we'll make sure. Oh. Now, what is, so how would they reach you to sign up? Oh, they can call me. Okay. Um, I, or call the JCC. Okay, and what's your number? And my, my number is 973-992-1950. And there are also art classes given in this building by the Art Association. And I would hate to be in competition with them. No. They're one of our groups. You know? Yeah. No, but I so, think it's all about the art. So yes. wherever you can get the classes, that's best. We thank you so much for letting us come. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. Hi, and here I am now. We've had a chance to hear all about the Livingston Community Center and a little bit about the Livingston Arts Council and the exhibit and the gallery space. Now, we're lucky enough to have the exhibiting artist, Michael Frank. Hello, Michael. Hello, Nancy. <laughs> and we're so happy. I'm so glad you let us know this was happening. Well, I'm glad you were able to come in. Absolutely. It's a wonderful space. And, you know, I've sort of followed your work. Uh, I think one of our earlier conversations was, I don't like the abstracts. Well, the heck with me, basically. But I've come to love it through your work, actually. Thank you. You've allowed me to develop my um, acquired taste for abstract art, almost like martinis. Uh, and I love it, and we are in front of a pretty important piece here at the exhibit. I, I thought your story about it was pretty important. Well, and the story about it is that it, the painting is called Going Back In, and it's a painting that I started in 1979, had it in my studio for, well, many, many years, and always kind of planned on going back into it. And finally, in 2005, I decided, okay, I'm going to get some paint together, and I'm start going at it and I went at it and in 2005 this is the painting that happened and then I call it going back in. So it represents a number of different, well quite a few years apart, that's a long well, time apart. Well the question that artists get a lot is how long did that take you to do? And I always say all my life because if it wasn't for the work that had gone before, the education that had gone before, the experience that had gone before, I would never have been able to do this painting. And so this is kind of a little capsule of time over the course of those years where I started something, had an idea, wanted to 
go in and, and, and progress and, and make that idea a little more solid. And so it took me a while, but I got it. And I'm happy with the painting. And this is what I wanted to stand in front of because it speaks to me. And your paintings speak to people differently, I know. Oh, they do. Vivian and I talked. She has a favorite one across the room. We've already been able to take them. So it's going to be part of the show. But do you have any paintings that you love or any that you really don't like by the time you're done with them? I mean, you have to love them all because they're your work. But any that you just really can't stand? Well, it's more, it's more like ones that I like more than others. Okay. Because I'm, at this point in my life, you know, I kind of know what I want to see and what I want to make and, and where I want to get to in the painting. The hardest thing to decide is when it's finished, especially with abstract work, because, you know, you can kind of stop early on and say, okay, you know, I'm happy with that. Or you can kind of push it. And I like to push it. I like to push the envelope, as they say. And I like to take it that one step further. If it's appropriate to do that. Sometimes I, I arrive at a piece, like the one I was just talking about, my, the one You're I did after, after my dad, and my dad who passed away in January. This painting here, called Fire and Light, was the first painting I did since he passed. And, I, and it, it's, it's very emotional, of course, but also I, I, I came to it and I arrived at the painting rather quickly because I kind of knew what I wanted to do. And so that, that, when you go into the studio, when you're, when you're painting, when you're acting, you know, my paintings are very active. So when I'm acting out, kind of, you know, quote, unquote, I, I look, I look at it, I go, okay, well, yeah, that can live. I can live with that, and that can live beyond me. Somewhere else. Yeah. Now, it's all oil? It's, it's all, all oil. oil and except and for the, the encaustics. The encaustics, yeah. you, you've sort of gone out and experimented some with the right. encaustics, and everybody keeps wanting you to do more of your oils, I'm sure. Although right. they love your encaustics, they love that oil. Well, you know, right. they really, it, because it, it, they, they, it's, it's you, right. I think. It, is it hard when you're an artist who's been doing it a long time? How many years have you been doing this, by the way? Well, years? 45 years. Yeah, okay, you're Something much younger than that. But is it hard <laughs> once you break out and change into some other medium? Well, it's, it's no, it's exciting. It's exciting. I, I, I look at it, you know, always, in a kind of you know educational way, and in the way that I am always learning about learning new things in order to express new ways, and technique and process are very important to me. Um, so it's, the, it's more the doing and being in the zone, as I call it, and loving that, and finding a, a way, finding a medium uh, or a media that will work for me to get me to the place that I want to be. So with the with the encaustic, a lot of it, you know, a lot of it was lending itself to collage and taking real imagery, real meaning, narrative imagery, uh, more recognizable imagery as opposed to abstract expressionism, and, and and formulating ideas that way so that the work can take on a new meaning and go to a new place. And I've been I've been happy with it. Now, this show is up until the end of August. This is 2010. Sometimes our shows repeat, especially if they're good, like you always are. So it's 2010, but you've set your sights on new things. You've been in Gallery 1978 since inception almost. Right? Yeah, part of the board. yeah, 1978 has been a big part of my life in Inglewood. I'm, I'm the vice president of the executive board with uh, Ellen Greenfield and a bunch of other wonderful people, wonderful volunteers. And we do the Art Studio Tour. Coming up is the Contemporary Artist Forum exhibition, which is an exhibition devoted to members of a class that I run called the Contemporary Artist Forum, where we uh, all bring in our own work and we discuss it. And it's a critique group, kind of on a college level critique group. And that meets at 1978. Now, you're also going to become part of, or have been asked to become part of? The Arts, the the Arts, Arts, Arts Council Center. Gallery in the town center, downtown Livingston. They also have a, an art gallery there. This is, by the way, I think you said the Arts Council yeah. of Livingston yeah. is exhibition space, and they will be um, having a, a, a group exhibition there, which uh, they've asked, and, they, and, and they've asked me to be part of it. Well, we might have um, to come have a walk over there. That would be okay. great. You're invited. Oh, thank okay. you very much, as, as well as just about everybody else in the That's audience. That's right. We Please hope that you have a chance to do that. Is there anything that you'd like to say? Um, I personally think it's great that you're here in Livingston. We're over in Maplewood and South Orange. Our show is broadcast from there. We hope it goes statewide. But what I think is wonderful is the interaction and interconnection.
connection to artists, regardless of where they're at. They find each other somehow. You buy spaces so you share it. Right. And I, I think it goes to the quality of people we have who are artists. They want to connect. Yep. They want to communicate. They want to share. Nobody hides their secrets. Well, it's, it's really a small art world community. And you know, Essex County is, is wonderful that way. Uh, you know, all the towns coming together, doing things together. Uh, the way I met Vivian, um, the president of the, uh, the Arts Council, was that I was asked to do, for the New, New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, I was asked to do a violin. They gave me a raw violin, unfinished, and they asked me to make uh, a work of art out of it. Me and nine other people, Vivian was one of them. We met at the opening, at the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra opening in uh, Newark, and um, we hit it off, and she told me about this, and I said, yeah, sure, you know, I have a lot of work I can show. I have 44 paintings here, so we, um, we put it together, and she's, she's been great. And it's the connectedness that we all feel, and we appreciate you for bringing richness to our lives, talking about your personal life, even the painting about that's coming from your heart after your dad's death. And we appreciate you out in the audience for always paying attention to these people whose voices are important. And I thank, thank you, for, Michael, for, for supporting. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for joining us today. Um, and we'll be sure to come up to all your shows. Thanks. Michael Frank, keep an eye out. Livingston Arts Council, Gallery Space at the Livingston Community Center, and all over the globe. They have children's theater, they have children's scholarships, and most of the artists want to make sure kids, the next generation, is prepared. We appreciate you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. This is Nancy Hines Glazer for All Art All the Time on Soma TV. And one of the things we always try to do is look back at the source of our wonderful artists in the area. And one of the major places is our school system. And we're delighted to have today, by way of introduction to someone you may already know, Anthony Mazaki, who is the new director of fine arts for. South Orange Maplewood School District, correct? Yes. How did you? Well, I, I hope I did your name right. Did you I? did, actually. Okay. And I was excited to have somebody so energetic take over for Nick because he was here a long time, and it's hard to come in, I think, after somebody's been here a long time. But you came out of the box running, so. I appreciate that. And tell us a little bit about your story, your history, and how you ended up here, if you don't mind. Well, um, I, uh, I grew up here in Maplewood. Um, I uh, attended uh, Tuscan School for elementary and, and Maplewood Middle School and graduated from Columbia High School in um, 91, I'm not ashamed to say. So um, <clears throat> I was kind of born and bred a, uh, a trombone player. I, I, I played trombone, I, I fell in love with it in the middle school and um, you know my, uh, my craft was really cultivated here at the high school as well as um, through a lot of extracurricular programs and studying privately. Um, it never dawned on me to ever teach. As a matter of fact, I, I had no desire to do so. And um, I um, spent uh, a little time at the Juilliard School and, and got my degrees, uh, both my bachelor's and master's from the Manhattan School of Music. Um, after that, I, I played Broadway full time and, um, you know, some things with the New Jersey Symphony and so on. And uh, moved out to Los Angeles um, after winning a couple of auditions out there and I ended up playing a with the San Diego Symphony and on some movie soundtracks and later on with uh, the Los Angeles Philharmonic. And when I was uh, out there, I had come to the uh, conclusion I, I didn't want to live there anymore, um, but I was, I was making a, a very good living as a, as a performer. So uh, I reached out to some friends back east, um, and all they could come up with at the time was, uh, uh, one of my friends was at a barbecue and he put this woman on the phone who was the principal of a middle school in Brooklyn and she wanted to start a middle school band program from scratch and I I really had no desire to, to do it but I thought I'll do it for a month while I get back on the scene well nine years later um, I was still working there we built a program from scratch that um, you know urban setting uh, none of them could afford private lessons or anything like that um, it's one of the largest band programs on the East Coast and actually uh, won a national jazz competition with the ensemble last year. 
in Florida um, really changed my life and the way I felt about teaching. Um, when I heard Nick was going to retire, uh, we happened to be having lunch together. I barely knew him. I, I played a solo with his ensemble. I said, well, what do I need to do? Because I wanted to do that here. And um, in your own me, way, giving back. In your own way. In my own way. It, it's, it's very interesting how it worked out. And um, I went back to college for a year to get the credentials just to be considered to uh, interview here. And luckily, uh, luckily it worked out. And here you are, and the rest, as they say, is history. And um, the reason I wanted to do this is it's exciting. You had a winter all arts festival, and it's traveled to the middle schools, uh, two of the middle schools, and then it was here at Columbia, which was music and art projected outside and really opening up the rest of the world to what we all know is true, which is it's just an exciting uh, field in the arts. And having you here, right out of the box doing something so special, I think says something about you, and I'm grateful as a community member, so. Well, I appreciate that, you know, I mean, as a community member, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to take ownership over this. I mean, I have kids that are gonna be passing through this system as well. And um, as far as, you know, when I got the job, I was supervisor of fine arts, you know, art and music, and um, what better way to, um, you know, celebrate what our teachers and students do on the art side of things by figuring out a way for them to see it while there are 700, 800 people in an auditorium. I can't tell you how many people did not know that we had a film animation program here. And when they saw the work of the kids, you know, projected like that, it was really, it was really a feast for the senses. And, and we do need to, we need to celebrate and recognize all the work that's going in to this stuff. It's, uh, it's really incredible. You know, real quick, we were talking about the PRL Gallery last year. I went to that showing. And um, reaching out, reaching in, reaching out, reaching in. Yeah. And uh, at the at the beginning, the uh, music teachers here played a little something yeah. for everybody, and then we went and, and, and saw the artwork. And uh, I heard somebody say, "You know, that's the first time I've ever seen the art and music collaborate." And uh, I found that to be a little sad. So I said, "Okay, let the collaboration begin." And we've and this was a, this is a good start. And um, I hope uh, I hope it's the beginning of something even bigger. I want to thank you for coming here and and bringing back all those talents in Los Angeles and performances and appreciation of art uh, to the kids and to the community overall. Welcome. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you.
Lance Glazer again um, after a wonderful conversation with the new director of fine arts at uh, South Orange Maplewood School District. We thought we'd bring you some of the amazing art teachers and artwork which happens here and I have right here in Columbia High School's gallery um, with me two of the amazing teachers that start the kids out to help them become professional artists. Alan Weisbord and the Schwartz, correct? And we're standing in front of the show title, which is Making Your Mark. So tell us a little bit about how this exhibit happened and uh, how you're teaching the kids to make their mark. Okay, start with you, Alan. Okay. okay. We came up with the title, Making Your Mark, because we found that whether uh, the students are doing pottery in uh, Ms. Schwartz's crafts class or in my design, drawing, or fibers classes, that there's a way to personalize the art expression. And it's not always in the traditional way of drawing and painting that people think of, but there are many other ways to express oneself. And also sometimes expression can be realistic and sometimes it can be more abstract. Which is right behind us. Right. <laughs> Which so, I understand is an exciting thing too. Yeah. Uh, the abstract uh, lesson came yeah. from where? The abstract <laughs> lesson came from a professional development trip that our art faculty took to the Museum of Modern Art in New York in the fall and we each had to develop a lesson and I used this lesson uh, with my design class you know a lot of times people look at abstract art and they say well that's splatter it's one line on the paper I can do that what's the big deal but I took my students through a process where they actually learned that various choices are what go into uh, making and, uh, the abstract art. And in this case here, they were actually responding to music. And they did large sheets of paper. And then we took little excerpts from that large sheet, like an excerpt from a music, a piece of music. And they could actually, you, you feel each of these little snippets as uh, an, an, uh, an expression of that music and that, that emotion that was created. And then assembling them speaks again to right. another thing. Yeah. And now you were also mentioning that two of you are on opposite sides of the school, right? So it's a great opportunity for that kind of collaboration too. It is right? nice. There's, there's eight art teachers here at Columbia and we often uh, find needs to talk to each other and work with each other. And Ellen and I have been doing this show for a couple of years. Um, we like it because I do typically three-dimensional pieces and Ellen does two-dimensional work. And so the shows come together in a very, very unique way. Uh, sometimes we don't always uh, know how it's going to plan, but it always pulls together. It always comes out. Well, we're going to take a stroll over and see some of Ellen's fiber work and then some of your ceramics. Right. So right. come on along with us, mm -hmm. won't you? And here we are in front of some of your amazing fiber pieces on this wall and behind me, Ellen. Right. Now, I've known you as a fiber artist. You have an exhibit right now at McKinley and Colbert and Summit, and it's a combination of photo and fiber. And you started out as a rug restorer. I heard that from the, on the QT. But yeah. what you've done now is taken all those cumulative skills and put it to work with That's your right. fiber yeah. with the kids. Now, tell us a little bit about what this was all about when you did this. Well, I teach uh, fibers. and. Uh, I have, one of the things we do is tapestry weaving, which you see here, these very small gems of uh, weaving that are woven on small frame looms. And then back here is felt making, and that's probably less uh, known in terms of a fiber technique. But the students actually start with carded dyed wool that they stack up, and the process is one where they wet it, put some soap, and roll it and press it for about 45 minutes, an entire period and get a solid piece of non-woven fabric. And it's a kind of magical process. And then they design a project that is uh, using their piece of felt. Some of them have made pillows. We have bags. There's a journal cover here, little pouches and things like that. And the students actually do some of the embellishing and stitching that is traditional uh, in felt making, in particular Central Asia. And wonderful, you have hot water, because that's yeah. important, I know that. So the, the surprise about the hot water came from a collaboration also with Ms. Schwartz. She was uh, invited us to do a Raku uh, clay firing. I was over on her side of the building, and I said, you have hot water? I don't have, I, the felt making really needs hot water, though I've done it for years with coal. The results are so, so this is the first year that my results have been excellent. The kids didn't complain that their hands were hot wet and cold, so it was very exciting. Wonderful. And now we're going to have a chance to go look at some ceramic pieces, Great. some of the symbols and marks. 
by making the mark uh, with that. Great. So thank you, Thank Ellen. you. And now by the magic of television, we've moved across the room in the gallery, and we're sitting here, Beth and I, and we're going to talk about some of the work that's behind the ceramic pieces. Um, and the two of you working together, and Ellen, and she talked about the symbols and the marks on some of the pieces. How did that work out? Besides ceramic, then you had to do something symbolic. That's well. true. And it's an introductory course, and teaching the kids the technique is one thing, and then having them understand the process of clay, and then getting to make art is all wrapped up in these projects. So uh, they made Anko, which was colored in a way that they felt personally connected to. So you'll see different colors and grays and different shades of pinks. Um, they felt that this was the skin of their pot and that we were going to then tattoo through it. And the tattoo marks were um, incised lines and the kids were able to draw images that were meaningful to them. So some of these images may not be meaningful to you on the outside. Just looking at the pot, you might not get it. But if you read the cards, you're going to understand that there's a story behind their marks. For instance, there's a small pot back here that is uh, very um, gestural and it's got a few marks on it. And when you read the card, uh, the child states that this is uh, to commemorate the death of her mother. And you would never know that from these marks. And, and, and it's just very insightful to be able to let the kids be expressive on these surfaces and then also be expressive with their words. And so I think uh, this show is a good culmination of them understanding what clay is about, how the clay process works, and uh, also being able to make their work. And explaining their work, I think, and that's helpful too. Uh, well, we want to thank you so much for joining us today. And, uh, we love everything that the teachers do, and we love art in this community. And we want to thank you for watching. It's Nancy Heinz Glazer with All Art, All the Time. I